our webinar. Okay, welcome everybody um, who's going to be uh, filtering into our virtual space here um, for our session this evening. Forgive me for that noise in the background. I do want to welcome everybody to a virtual college exploration for all Wisconsin students sponsored by the Wisconsin Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. Um, we're excited to have you here um, for our wonderful session uh, today about uh, going to college on the west coast of Wisconsin. So with that, just a few brief housekeeping pieces that you're going to see on the screen in front of you. If you do want to ask questions, you can use the Q&A function that you're going to see on your screen. And just so you know, you are in this webinar format. So your camera and microphone uh, are off. So uh, panelists cannot see or hear you. But again, do know that you can, um, you know, share your questions throughout the presentation by using that function. And there is also going to be a recording of this. So you will be able to access this um, down the road um, by uh, going to WACAC.com, also a place where you can look to see if there's any other sessions you'd be interested in signing up throughout this week and next. Uh, so with that, I will um, turn it over to our wonderful, wonderful presenters. Well, thank you, Mark, and good evening. We are so excited to have you participating in this session tonight. And this evening, we're going to be highlighting three different campuses on the west coast of Wisconsin, uh, UW-Superior, UW-River Falls, and UW-La Crosse. Uh, we're going to start alphabetically, which just happens to start on the southern part of the state, and we're going to gradually work our way north uh, to Superior. And uh, this evening, we are going to be highlighting not only the communities, the places that you can live in while you're going to college on the West Coast, but also our campuses. And with that, we hope that we'll have plenty of opportunities afterward for questions and conversations uh, from you, engaging in you, answering questions that you have, and hopefully helping you in the college search process. Uh, this should be a very exciting time of the process of finding a college that's just right for you. We recognize it's maybe a little wonky and a little weird this year, um, but with the right attitude and perspective, we know that we can finish this year off strong and get you ready for the beginning of your college career, which will happen for some of you in just over 12 months. And so there's a lot of great things to celebrate both as families and individuals and looking forward to being there every step of the way too. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, with UW Lacrosse and I'll begin sharing my screen and uh, let's get on with the show. All right, so if we have done everything correctly here, you should now see the PowerPoint presentation going to college on the west coast of Wisconsin. And uh, live session tonight here, Wednesday, August 26th at 6 o'clock p.m., but we know this is going to be recorded. For those of you that are watching the recording, welcome. We're glad that you've been able to join us. And so as we talk about uh, some of the different things, what I want to make sure that I can do is Get going on that first slide. So again, my name is Corey Shilquist. I serve as the Director of Admissions at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. This is the start of my 25th year at UWL Admissions, and I have really enjoyed my time in the city of La Crosse and at UW La Crosse. Um, I'm originally from Minnesota, and uh, after leaving high school, finishing high school, I crossed the border into Wisconsin, and La Crosse has been my home, and there's a lot of things that uh, have made me want to stay at La Crosse, but I think there are many reasons why students really like to spend their college years in the city of La Crosse too. You can see a little information. Our population is at 52,000 people. We are the largest city on the western border of the state of Wisconsin, and the greater La Crosse area is just over 100,000 people. And that provides our students with a number of big city amenities without the big city hassles necessarily. And as we have students coming here from all over the state of Wisconsin and the Midwest, uh, but also people in this region come to La Crosse for a variety of different reasons. And one of the things that we always like to talk about at La Crosse is our playground. And that includes the mighty Mississippi River and the towering bluffs. And as I'm on my, in my office at campus right now, I can look out the windows and I can see the bluffs. And I know how much time our students are able to spend uh, out there in the bluffs, whether it's hiking and biking, um, we've got the water. So the fishing and the water skiing and those opportunities too. And then certainly we can't forget about the winter with the downhill skiing and Mount lacrosse and the cross country skiing that we have too. We truly are fortunate to have some amazing scenery on the West Coast uh, with the rivers that we have and the bluffs and for our students to be able to spend time up in the bluffs with some great views and even for our students that are just on campus and sitting in our football stadium overlooking the bluffs and be able to see the colors of the leaves changing throughout those fall months too. 
within the city of La Crosse, there's some great opportunities there too. I've talked about the, the big city amenities that we're able to enjoy here without necessarily those big city hassles. And so uh, plenty of restaurants and shopping and concerts and hotels for our guests to stay in and festivals, again, serving this region of the state of Wisconsin. So many people coming to La Crosse. Uh, for, for business and shopping and those types of things. And we're also fortunate to have a city bus system. So it helps our students navigate the community as they go to the movie theaters and the shopping malls and the concerts and uh, the restaurants, grocery stores, those types of things there as well. For our students, their student ID actually serves as their city bus pass. And so that's their, mean of, their means of transportation around town if needed. I also encourage students to think about the city that they're going to go to college in as an extension of their classroom. And how does that complement their education and their opportunities there? And so the city of La Crosse is filled with different internships and job options. We know a lot of students come to La Crosse to pursue majors and programs of study in the health related professions. And so for us to have two major medical institutions, Gunderson Hospital Health System and Mayo Health System right here with presence in the city of La Crosse and plenty of clinics in the outlying areas, it gives our students those opportunities for job shadowing and, and internships that are, that are so key and crucial to their education. But we also have some big industries. And if you're from Wisconsin, you know Quick Trip. And I'm sure that you have stopped a few times at Quick Trip. And the headquarters for Quick Trip is right here in La Crosse. And so it's much more than a convenience store. It's a major corporation. And our students are pursuing internships there from being involved in the marketing to the fuel price analyst division to the dairy and bakery divisions. So many different things there. Festival Foods grocery stores, maybe you've shopped there. Their headquarters are also in La Crosse. And Train also has a great presence here too. And so they employ uh, accountants and chemists and all kinds of individuals, computer science uh, majors from our, uh, our campus too. We have a lot of education majors at UWL. And so they're looking for elementary schools and middle schools and high schools for experiences. And then also just the research opportunities, the marshes and the bluffs and the rivers provide our students those outdoor classrooms too. Now I talk about students and UW La Crosse is fortunate to have a student enrollment of 10,500 students and that medium size institution works so well here uh, in, in our city. And uh, with 130 plus academic programs to study within the business administration area, our College of Arts, Social Sciences and Humanities, our School of Education, and then that College of Science and Health. A lot of different opportunities for our students to explore. Some students arrive on campus knowing what they want to study. Others are undecided and we assist them in that process of determining what's the best fit for them. We certainly couldn't be an institution without amazing faculty members. And so for our distinguished teaching faculty, and I intentionally put the word teaching in there because our faculty are here to teach. They do research on the side but they also do some fantastic teaching along the way too. And let's face it, that's one of the main reasons why you're heading off to college is to have that strong education. And then we complement that education with research opportunities. Our opportunities for students to be able to connect with faculty members and be able to dig a little bit more into their area of expertise. This is what opens them up for opportunities to continue on to uh, attend conferences and present that research. For some of our students, this is just the beginning of their continued education as they go on to graduate school opportunities. And we know these research opportunities also are some of the things that stand out on those resumes for students when they are looking for those jobs once they've graduated. This is a campus on the move too. And if you haven't been on campus recently, I really encourage you to come see the campus. We've been able to add buildings and renovate buildings to really make sure that our students have the classrooms and the laboratory facilities that are perfect for them. I can also see out my window, the, lab, the Prairie Springs Science Center. That is entirely a new science building just with labs in it. Um, it is a laboratory building that if we took all four stories of it and put it on one level playing field, it would cover three football fields. But I also important to share that the largest lab in there only has 24 seats. So it's designed to have small laboratory spaces. And we're excited that the Wittick Hall is opening up in a couple weeks to house our new College of Business Administration too. My office, the admissions office, sits right in the student union, which is a fantastic description of our student body. This building is active. There are things going on. Our students are engaged. And it really helps define what the UWL student is. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our athletic programs, our art programs, our student organizations, the recreation facilities that we have and the performance venues. And then the lower right-hand side of the screen, you can see a picture of our football stadium 
there's also some fresh dirt there. And we just started uh, moving around dirt this month to uh, prepare for the building of our new um, field house. And so we'll have an, another indoor track and field complex, but also space for our exercise and sports science majors too. And then there's also this element of moving to the West Coast and living on college campuses. And our residence halls provide a, a nice community for students to be able to get to know one another, whether it's a traditional residence hall, our suite residence hall options, or our apartment complex for our upper class students. And we have an entire campus community that's focused on student support and success. We want you to be the most successful students possible. And that means being there when you need that help, whether it's advising and tutoring and career preparation, know that we have faculty and staff dedicated to those specific areas to be your cheerleaders when you need it. And certainly we are excited as you prepare to graduate too. Our students, they stay around. That's what the retention rate is. They stick with us. They start with us and they stay with us. And then ultimately they graduate. And those are certainly some measurements of success that we're proud of at UW La Crosse. And we hope that you as students and counselors and families get a chance to come visit campus meet some of the, facts, the faculty and staff that are here to help you be successful. And with that, I pass it over to my colleague, Cindy, from UW-River Falls. Thanks, Corey. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Cindy Holbrook. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at UW-River Falls. Um, this is a crazy uh, time for you all doing your college search. We know that for sure, which is why I can tell you that as Corey is looking out upon his campus, I'm looking out across my front yard. Um, so I'm in my son's bedroom with a famous Green Bay Packer sign and a Minnesota Twins stadium and uh, his painting of Batman. So all really important things that tell you this, uh, this crazy college search time is really, really unique. So um, as you go through this time in your search, just know that we're here to help you. Everybody in the UW system um, really wants this to be a, a personalized experience for you and to help you find your fit. So um, please reach out to, to UW River Falls or across Superior or any other UW school that you're looking at is we really wanna help you um, navigate this unique college search um, year, much different, than, much different than any other time. So let's talk about the city of River Falls. We're about halfway between La Crosse and Superior on that west border. Um, you're gonna, many of you are gonna find the city of River Falls or will feel very familiar um, to lots of Wisconsin kids, to a lot of uh, students living in the outskirts of Minnesota. We have a traditional downtown Main Street with a few grocery stores, amazing pizza places, dynamite burgers, and lots of great hometown restaurants and shopping options. So it's going to feel very, very familiar to many of you. Um, with a population around 15,000, we might feel really big to some of you, and we might feel really small to others. Um, it's always interesting to hear the perspective when students come to town and visit campus um, of, how, of how they're experience, experiencing uh, River Falls. So either way, we're going to help you feel at home with our community connections and the collaboration between the city of River Falls and our university staff and students. Um, this, the, the Falls Theater in town um, is famous in the area. It's one of the least expensive dates you'll ever be on in college. So um, just know that if you come to UW River Falls, uh, you'll find that Falls Theater right away your freshman year. So that's pretty dynamite experience in town. The campus and the community are going to, they butt right up next to each other. So we're right side by side. Our students typically don't need cars to get anywhere in the downtown area. And in fact, this is the uh, main street, the picture that you're looking at here. And right at the end of that, you'll be able to identify the flags leading right to campus. So you won't need a car if you don't want to. Students can have a car on campus their freshman year if they choose to, but that's completely up to you. Um, typically, you're going to need a car more if you want to, if as you go through your college career, if you want to get to Hudson, which is about eight miles from here, which is a bigger city. Um, and then to get to the Twin Cities, we're 35 minutes from the Mall of America, which, you know, sometimes you go and spend more money than you want to, but um, just know that we're 35 minutes from the Mall of America uh, and have tons and tons of internship, internship opportunities in the Twin Cities. So we are less than 30 minutes. We're probably 20 minutes from 3M in St. Paul, which is a major um, employer of our students, uh, science students, business students, that's a great connection for them. But um, just know we're only 30 minutes from the Twin Cities, 16 Fortune 500 companies in that area. Um, many times where students choose to attend school, that's where they're going to create the opportunities, the networking opportunities with employers, have internships in that region, and really create the connections that you're going to need 
uh, as you graduate from college. So don't underestimate that location um, and that proximity to the Twin Cities because you will get exposure to different companies. 3M Target Corporation is in, in this area, um, 30 minutes from here. Multiple medical facilities and you know, it's a major metropolitan area. So you're gonna get that small town experience um, with the big city amenities right next to us. So that's a pretty great experience. Um, let's talk, let's dive into academics. So our academic programs at UW River Falls, we have 70 plus majors, lots of opportunities in a variety of areas. And we'll talk about that in just a second. All of our classes are taught by professors. We don't have any teaching assistants or grad assistants on campus. Um, so 100% of our classes are taught by our faculty members. You're going to have advisors um, that are going to be teaching your classes that are in your academic area. Our undecided majors or pre-major pre students are going to have advisors that are specialists in that area and that are going to help you explore a variety of different options and kind of dip your toe in things that you might be interested in. So um, you're going to definitely get connected whether you select your major coming in or if you select your major later. Either way, we're going to get you connected to the right people. Um, class size, typical class size on campus is 22, probably pretty similar to many of your um, high school classes and even our general education classes are capped at about 30 students. So you are going to get that personal experience um, on a campus the size of River Falls. So let's dive into some of the academic programs. Our university is split into four different areas, four different colleges. Um, we have the College of Arts and Sciences. This is where you're going to find the traditional physics, chemistry, biology. Um, we have dynamite uh, labs on campus, a tissue and cellular innovation center that our biology, biomedical sciences, chemistry students use, um, hands-on experiential learning, and, and state-of-the-art labs in a variety of different science programs. So you're also going to find in the arts and sciences are marketing programs, uh, communication programs, um, just a, a, a huge variety of programs. You're going to want to check online for any of the options within that College of Arts and Sciences. It is our biggest college on campus and houses many of our general education classes, um, but the opportunities that you're going to get in that program are varied, very vibrant uh, music and theater programs on campus um, that really connect to the community. The next one is that College of Business and Economics. So we are AACSB accredited, which is uh, really the strongest accreditation uh, organization for business schools. So if you think you even may go on to a master's in business, that AACSB accreditation is going to be really important for you. So our business students, this proximity to the Twin Cities, again, can't be underestimated um, with our business students. We have a St. Croix Valley Innovation Center right in our backyard, um, different maker spaces on campus, uh, professional sales labs on campus, internship and networking opportunities in the Twin Cities. You know, you get the connection to the small towns, to the suburban businesses, to the metro businesses, and you really can't beat the opportunities in that business program. Data science, really unique program in that, in that um, College of Business. So we have also have the College of Education and Professional Studies. We're very well known as a teaching school. Um, we do a great job uh, teaching teachers how to teach, right? So we have two preschools on campus. We're um, connected to Every school in this area, we get our students out into rural schools, small towns, where many of you may be coming from, uh, urban schools. So we're going to get you out into the Twin Cities area, we're going to get you in suburban schools. Um, to get students, we're going to get our teachers out into the field right away their first year, help you figure out if teaching is really a profession that you want to get into, um, and get you some exposure to a variety of different areas, which it helps our students. And then we have the College of Agriculture, Food and Environmental Sciences, uh, two campus farms, we have an animal welfare, welfare lab. Uh, we're one of the few campuses that you'll walk around and see people training dogs and different animals. Our horse farm is connected right to the end of campus. Um, some of the research opportunities our students get on those campus farms is unparalleled. So we are a very, very strong pre-vet school. Um, anything in the agriculture, animal science area, River Falls is really the place to be. All right, affordability. So you all know the world is crazy right now and affordability is more important to families than it has ever been. Um, so we wanna make sure that we are keeping our tuition and, and fees affordable for families. Really the whole UW system is a great opportunity. The lighting in here is horrible. The sun's going down and shining right in my eyes. So didn't plan for that. Anyways, the tuition for students for Wisconsin residents, you can't beat it, right around $8,000. Full time, it's flat rate tuition. So anything between 12 and 18 credits are gonna pay the same. Um, you can see the double room. You're looking at, at a little under $15,000 for everything for the year. So that includes your membership to 
to our fitness center. It includes your textbooks. It includes uh, uh, free laundry in our residence halls. Um, our billing structure is very straightforward uh, and it really helps families plan. So a couple things real quick that you should be thinking about right now, apply, get that application in. That's the first step. The UW system revamped the whole application process. It'll take you 10 to 15 minutes to apply. You can attach your transcript right to the application. You can attach your test scores, your ACT uh, or SAT if you choose to, that's gonna be up to you. Um, but just get that application in now. Visit campus, lots of different opportunities. You can visit in person. You can do a self-guided tour on campus. You can take advantage of a whole bunch of different virtual opportunities, but start to get a flavor for campus um, even as, as students start to move in this week. So um, last thing to keep in mind, get that application, visit campus, and then scholarships. Our first scholarships this year are due January 1st. So we really wanna try to get you in that application process um, to be able to open up that scholarship, uh, that scholarship opportunity for you as soon as we can. So we're gonna move uh, further up the border now to Jeremy at UW-Superior. Thank you, Cindy. So my name is Jeremy Neer, and I'm Director of Admissions at University of Wisconsin-Superior, and I'd like to welcome you all here this evening, and thank you for joining us. So UW-Superior is the smallest of the four-year campuses in the UW system, and I'll start by talking a little bit about our location here so that you can uh, become familiar with, with uh, the Twin Ports area as we refer it to. So on our next slide here, um, you'll see that UW-Superior is located in Superior, Wisconsin, which is uh, the furthest northwest point there in, in community in Wisconsin. We um, are part of a, a larger community called, as I mentioned, the Twin Ports, which does include Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, Duluth itself has about 90,000 people. Superior, Wisconsin has about 26,000, and there's about 275,000 people in the greater Twin Ports area. So that does include the, the smaller surrounding areas and, and those uh, larger communities around uh, Duluth as well. So I know uh, Cindy and, and Corey had mentioned their communities as well and, and how some of those have the best of both worlds and I think our uh, Twin Ports region and Superior area has that um, as well for a lot of our students that are, that are choosing to attend here. Um, so students may have maybe come in from smaller communities and, and be intimidated by those larger towns or maybe looking for a bigger community feel. Um, we actually have five college institutions in the Twin Ports, including three four-year uh, institutions and two two-year institutions between uh, Wisconsin and Superior or in uh, Duluth, Minnesota. Um, with those communities too, it has a very heavy college presence. So. Uh, you think of the college communities and, and the industries that are driven to those as well with what we have going on as far as concerts, both um, indoor and outdoor concerts throughout the year, uh, mall area, um, areas that, that students um, can hang out, recreation areas as well. Really, if, if any of you have been up to the Superior, Wisconsin, Duluth, Minnesota area, you'll know that it really is known for its outdoor adventure and, and outdoor activities too. So a lot of hiking, biking, rock climbing, skiing uh, on Spirit Mountain. Um, those are a lot of the typical activities that are, that are going on and, and especially uh, during these times here where a lot of indoor activities may be shut down. It's been attracting a lot of tourists and, and a lot of um, tourism has driven our economy up in this area. Um, as I mentioned, some of the indoor activities too, we have a plethora of that too, that some of that tied to the tourist industry, but then certainly things that are driven by our college atmosphere that we have as well. Um, certainly as we talk about some of the outdoor areas, we are located right at the, that point of Lake Superior, so less than two miles from the lake. Um, we'll have a lot of activities that are driven around that. So we have our Superior Adventures Club that has been very popular where students will uh, have trips usually once a month, sometimes uh, sooner than that, uh, or more frequent than that, that they'll go to the Apostle Islands in you know, Bayfield area, or they'll go skiing on Spirit Mountain, or they'll do uh, overnight camping trips. So, so it really does feed into a large part of our culture as well. Um, as you can see on the map here towards the bottom of the screen too, it, it also gives you our, our proximity to a lot of the cities, both around Wisconsin and Minnesota. So we're about two and a half hours from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, we are um, a short drive to the Ashland Bayfield area, about six hours from uh, Milwaukee and, and uh, 
about um, two and a half hours from Eau Claire area. As you'll see on the next slide here, I'm um, talking a little bit more in depth about our campus and, and some of our uh, fast facts. I mentioned us being the smallest campus in the UW as far as four year campuses go. Uh, really what we tell students is we're uh, more of the private school feel at the public school price. So um, you'll really get that individual attention. And, and as I mentioned, you know, students coming from a variety of different backgrounds, some students maybe coming from small graduating classes of 15 to 20 students, and some may be coming from large graduating classes of six or 700, um, and they're looking for that individual personalized attention. Um, so I think that's one thing that we really embody well from that point of application for students. Um, average class size being about 17 to 18 students, 14 to one student to faculty ratio, um, about 2,600 uh, students total on our campus. We also do have a, a large population of first generation college students. And then we also have the second highest uh, international student population in the UW system. So um, even though we're a small campus and, and those numbers may be smaller comparatively, we do have a strong diversity on our campus um, from that. And then, and then also from our domestic students too with a large population of First Nation students coming to our campus as well. And then uh, we also do, uh, as we'll talk a little bit later on the scholarship piece, you know, a large number of our students that, that are coming to us that do qualify for uh, financial aid and, and need um, based uh, scholarships. Um, athletics is a large part of our campus culture too. I know that was mentioned um, by a couple of the other presenters as well. Um, we have about 325 student athletes on our campus of those uh, 2,600 total students. So that is a big part of our culture. So division uh, three, um, three athletics on our campus. We have uh, pretty much any sport. I, I, besides football and lacrosse and wrestling are a couple of the big ones, but I know that a lot of our popular ones that have drawn in students from around the region are uh, men's and women's soccer teams. Um, tennis teams have been growing quite a bit. Our basketball teams are always popular um, and seem to, to do well um, the last few years here as well. So we'll uh, move on to the next slide here and we can dive a little bit more into our, our um, academics. So this ties also, some of these tie also into our region. Um, I mentioned, you know, the, the large impact that Lake Superior has on our campus. And a lot of that also drives some of our academic programs and majors that we have. Um, transportation and logistics management that you'll see listed under our business and uh, econ school. Um, that probably is one of our most unique majors in the, um, in the system. And then uh, it's only about 35 programs in the nation um, or one of about 35 programs in the nation. So um, when you think of, especially right now with some of the issues going on with supply chains and with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, those are the students that are leaders at Am companies like Amazon to figure out how do I, I get products from point A to point B. Um, I always tell students that, you know, even though it lives in with, with business, um, it relates a bit more to uh, engineering type mindset too of students that are looking for solutions, problem solving type mindset, critical thinking type mindset as well. Um, so that's one of our very unique programs. Art therapy is another very unique program uh, within the, the uh, state of Wisconsin as well that we draw on quite a few students every year. As far as our largest majors on campus, uh, education is our largest program. Um, with about 15% of our student population pursuing elementary ed or secondary education. So that is really our backbone of what we were founded on as a teacher's institution and something that we continue to do well and um, actually offer a fully online elementary ed program as well as in person. So that draws in teachers from all over the state and, and all over the region. Um, we also have large programs within our uh, School of Business and Economics. Our Communicating Arts has been growing um, strong uh, fine and, and applied arts as well. And then within our social sciences, our criminal justice and legal studies programs have been ones that have continued to expand and, and uh, have a lot of hands-on academic service learning type uh, internships that are part of that. Um, we are launching a brand new major here that actually was just approved this week um, that is not on the list here yet. Um, in our public leadership and innovation. So that really dives into a lot of the social issues that 
that are presently going on uh, in the country and in the world. So looking at a lot of um, uh, systematic uh, um, programs throughout, throughout communities and community engagement and um, social justice and, and really tying well into those areas. And then also you'll see here highlighted in the um, far right bar too, um, we also are one of the oldest schools to have a uh, individually designed uh, program on our campus. So our individually designed, self-designed major um, really does a nice job of allowing students to tailor their, their uh, academic career in whatever field they're interested in. So as long as we have those majors and that curriculum that ties in with what you're looking for, um, we're able to create that tailored individually designed or interdisciplinary studies major. And then to wrap up uh, my slides here, we'll close on uh, some affordability. So I mentioned this as well as far as uh, our percentage of students, uh, over 80 students qualifying for some type of need. Um, we do offer an array of different scholarships for new incoming freshmen. Um, our deadline for that will be coming up for fall 2021 students who would be applying. That would be December 1st for our first round. And then we do uh, typically have a second round if we have scholarships still available February 1st. But we always encourage students to apply um, sooner than later. And we will open up that essay portion around October 1st of every year so that students can uh, begin completing that quick essay form to be eligible um, to kind of throw their hat in the ring for potential scholarships. Um, we have 11 full tuition scholarships, so um, chances of uh, students getting those are pretty strong. We typically have an incoming freshman class of about 320 students. Um, and then we also have about $300,000 of other merit-based scholarships. Some of those are tied to academic majors, um, but a lot of those are just based upon the strength of the student's essay, based upon uh, high school GPA and curriculum and uh, factors in line with that as well. Um, our cost numbers are listed on the side here too. Um, so similar to the other campuses, I think the UW system has done an excellent job of keeping that cost low for our students. So um, looking at that total package of uh, Wisconsin resident uh, tuition with room and meal plan of being around that fifteen dollars to, to $16,000 um, mark for the year. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of those scholarship opportunities that students can qualify for. Um, and then the uh, standard book and, and allotment on there too. And if we have any um, Minnesota students on the call today too, uh, Minnesota reciprocity certainly applies for those students too. Um, so those are the highlights from UW-Superior. I think I mentioned, you know, uh, as Cindy said too, um, just be sure to pay attention to those deadlines as you're starting your application process. And the application is live right now for uh, students applying for fall 2021. Um, and then be sure to pay attention to any of those scholarship deadlines as well. So with that, I will turn it back to Corey as we jump in with a few other updates and we'll move into Q&A. Great, thanks Jeremy and thank you Cindy too. And one of the topics that both Jeremy and Cindy talked about was the application for admission at UW, um, in, within the UW system. And all three of our campuses use the UW system application for admission. And as they shared, it is now live. It's, it's available for you to begin completing and submitting for the fall of 2021. It's a revamped uh, application like Cindy said, and so it's nice to see um, the new design that's gonna make it easier for you as students to apply. And uh, as that application is live, um, it's also important for us to share that there's an application fee. The standard application fee for our three campuses is $25. And if you have questions about those application fees, it's important to check with that campus specifically too. And we also wanna make sure that students and families are aware that there is an application fee waiver for those families that may have uh, an economic financial hardship. And uh, certainly don't let the application fee be a deterrent. Uh, work with your school counselors and there's more information online with the UW system application about that. Um, Cindy had mentioned the really cool feature now with the application, you can upload your transcript. So it's saving you some time to get that information to us as well. Uh, so at a minimum, we will need to have that application and that high school transcript. Um, our campuses are also test optional for this next year too. And so that means we're not requiring an ACT or SAT score to be included with your application. 
but if you would like to submit that ACT or SAT score, you are welcome to do so. And that can be part of your application review if that's the route that you would like to pursue. Know that the application for admission asks a question so that we're aware of what you would like us to do in that review, whether to review, wait and review your test scores or to continue without those test scores too. Um, each of our campuses are a little different in terms of how we make our admissions decisions and that application review process. Uh, but I think I speak for all of our campuses that if you ever have a question, you can call us, you can email us, you can write a letter to us. Um, we are there, we are answering our phones and we are available for you too. I'm going to check our questions and there is uh, a few questions coming in. So we're going to try to capture as many of those as we possibly can. Uh, the first question that we have is, do you accept PSEO credits and AP credits? And I can take a crack at that. I think Jeremy was just about ready to open his mouth. Um, and uh, with the nature of the, the question being PSEO, my hunch is you might be a Minnesota student because that is a program specific to Minnesota, the post-secondary education option. In Wisconsin, the equivalent would be the early college credit program, ECCP. And so, yes, our campuses do uh, accept credits through the, the PSEO program. Um, we will work with you to determine that transferability of those courses too. So we can't say that every single class transfers, um, but uh, if you've been working with your school counselors to select courses that are appropriate for transfer, we certainly wanna work with you on that too. And all of our campuses also have an AP policy. And so uh, a score of three or higher on the AP exam will result in some form of college credit. And sometimes when you get a four or five, your credit will be even better. Um, too, but uh, we can go into more detail on our websites exactly what that AP policy is. I, I'm always uh, impressed and appreciate those students that are taking PSEO and, and college level classes and AP courses. It's preparing you for the rigors of college, and we know that that first semester of college is going to be a smoother transition because you've already challenged yourself with that rigor. And toss it over to Jeremy and Cindy for any additional thoughts on that. Yeah, thank you, Corey. And, and I would add to that um, UW system is now part of what's called transferology. Um, I, I believe uh, River Falls was one of the earlier campuses to adopt uh, this platform. But really what that is, is a database that you can go in there and plug in college courses. So whether you're from Minnesota or Wisconsin, you know, you're taking these community court or these uh, courses through local community colleges or four-year institutions, you can plug in there to see if those courses transfer to a certain institution and see how they transfer. Um, but I think an important note too, as Corey said from the beginning, is that all of our campuses are happy to answer questions that if you are looking at registering for this certain course at this certain institution and you have questions of will this transfer, will this not, or would this help me if I'm planning on being a pre-med major, um, we have people on our, our campuses that are happy to answer those questions and help advise you uh, through that pathway as well. And, and your advisors certainly, or your um, school counselor certainly can reach out to us too with those questions. Yep, Jeremy, that's exactly what I was going to say is the best thing to do is really to, if you want to know a specific, uh, specific course or something like that, reach out to the individual campuses, zip an email and let us know what class it is or what the exact question is and we're, we're definitely going to help you with that. I can tell you that UW system generally is very transfer friendly um, and we really appreciate the, the students that are extending themselves and um, really working hard in high school. So the campuses are going to do everything we can to get you college credit for those classes. And another question, how accessible are professors? Great question, I like that one a lot. Jeremy or Cindy, you wanna start with that one? Sure, I can jump in with that one. Thanks, Corey. So um, I mentioned, you know, speaking on, on behalf of our campus, just that small campus feel. And, and I know um, all three of our campuses really have that personalized attention, but I think that's important for students to consider when they are picking a school. You know, you, you look at a lot of our students that may be thinking of going on to medical school or graduate school or looking for um, connections for job placements once they graduate. And those faculty members are those individuals that they've built relationships with over those four years and are that support structure for those students to, to help guide them, help connect them to, um, to the professional world once they graduate. Um, so I think our faculty do an excellent job of making themselves accessible, of 
Um, a lot of times putting their personal cell phone number on their uh, syllabus so the student has that. And, and, and certainly during these challenging times too, they know that students will have circumstances both personal and with their family and life circumstances that may come up, um, you know, even aside from COVID related issues uh, that they make themselves available and, and, uh, and try to work with students the best they can to accommodate them. And, and I think um, a lot of them are very understanding that, you know, a lot of students that we have are working their way through college themselves, working part-time jobs, multiple part-time jobs, have families of their own, have other obligations within their families too. So I think just having that communication channel open with your faculty member is important. And I would echo that too. You know, taking those steps to establish those relationships with your faculty members early on is so important. Uh, they truly want to get to know our students and to be able to have that connection early on in your semester just makes it so much easier when you might need that extra help to be able to go in for that assistance. And then they're going to be remembering you and keeping you in mind for those fantastic internships and job opportunities uh, too. So consider them as a, a key partner in your education in college too. Another question that came in uh, is related to campus visits and uh, what should you do on a campus visit? Cindy or Jeremy? That, that's a great question and it's a little bit different question right now than it typically would be. So um, it, it's interesting. I think students tend to think right now that it's harder to visit campus and I would I would argue a little bit the opposite right now. So, so many of us have created virtual opportunities for students to see our campus and meet what, where they're comfortable um, and maybe what their family situation is or their school situation is. So there are, every campus is different. Um, every campus has responded to, to, the, um, to the COVID health situation a little bit differently, but we're all gonna have virtual options so students can um, really connect with somebody live. I know on a campus, the size of UW River Falls, it's really important to us to have those personal conversations um, and help make sure that students are finding their fit and answering those, um, you know, those individual questions that students have about the college search. So it's unique to everybody. I know a lot of us have, I know, uh, Mike, better speak for us because I'm not sure what every campus is doing right now, but um, we're taking as many students on campus as we can right now. Um, where our campus visits are filling up. People want to get out and see campuses before school starts. Um, so showing campus, it looks a little bit different right now, right? With less students on it than typically would, but we're excited to welcome our, our general student population back this week and really just get out there, visit, ask questions, um, make it as unique and individual as you need to. Know that there's virtual options. There's, I know Corey, you guys are offering that um, curbside option for self-guided tours. Um, campuses are really willing to help you figure out how to visit the best way that fits you right now. Yeah, thanks Cindy for talking about that curbside visit option that we have. Um, we've been having a lot of fun with it. So we do have the in-person visits, but for families that would rather have uh, a, a different option, uh, basically what happens is you arrive on campus, you call our office, we run out and give you a folder of information through your car window. And then at your leisure, you can walk around campus and using QR codes, you can uh, listen to audio and see video of different buildings and spot, spots on campus too. Um, and I think that all of us are really looking forward to the time when we can bring um, everybody back to campus for visits. And um, by taking advantage of some of the virtual options now, learning about campuses, then in the spring, perhaps when we have less restrictions, you're gonna be able to really dig into our campus and get to know those features too. Well, I know we're getting close to the end of the session. So what I wanna do, oh, we have another question that just came in here. Uh, great question. What year in high school should you apply? Jeremy, you wanna take that one? Yeah, so um, this year our application uh, the UW system application that both Cindy and Corey had mentioned opened August 1. So uh, we anticipate that if a student is going into their uh, senior year now, um, the app should be open right now, but we'd anticipate if a student's a junior, you know, it would open around that same time frame uh, next year or the summer of uh, 2021. Um, certainly you want to start to think about some of those things as far as what courses you're taking and, and uh, things along those lines uh, even earlier than senior year uh, but really senior year is that that main time to start your application process
great. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, what I am trying to do is share my screen. And I think, is it showing up the contact information on there? No, it is not. So with that, let me, let me give it one more try here, folks. Are we successful there, I think? All right. <laughs> Some contact information and uh, certainly if you have questions, feel free to reach out to any of our campuses or our offices. We are excited to have been able to spend some time with you and wish you the very best as you continue with your college search process. Awesome. Well, I do want to give a big thank you to our presenters and for all of those who have attended here uh, today. Uh, just a quick reminder, there will be a survey that pops up. Would appreciate your feedback about our session today. Um, also know that, again, you can um, see a recording of this session to um, revisit any information that you might have missed or pass it along to some friends as well. And that can all be accessible at WACAC, W-A-C-A-C dot com. And thank you again for, for attending uh, this, this evening.